Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know me, my name is Jasmine and I've been kind of vlogging my nursing journey since I started back in fundamentals actually. And I just became an official BSN RN this past week, so welcome if you're new. So today I'm going to be doing my very last nursing school update. Um, I graduated in August of this year. So super, super recently. My last term for me was my preceptorship. Last term was 10 weeks. Um, it included my preceptorship, which I did in the ICU, which you may have seen through the vlogs that I did. And I did, um, I think it was required to do capstone online, which like, you know, it's just one of those, another online class. So, but capstone, if you don't know, it's basically kind of prepping you to make your resume, your portfolio, and that's what you're going to be using when you apply for jobs. So what I did notice is that other schools don't have preceptorship. I know that my preceptor told me that um, the school that she went to herself did not even have a preceptorship. So despite all the chaos that I've experienced at my school, um, I was thankful that they did have a preceptorship because um, it is helpful. So when I was in my previous term, I had interviewed for a position um, for a one-to-one -one preceptorship at this hospital, we have a program called Transition Into Practice Program, and that's what I decided to do. Um, if I'm going to be super honest with you, I honestly did it for the free scrubs. <laughs> um, if you don't know what they look like, all my thumbnails with the teal scrubs, that is the free scrubs that we got. And I really like those, and I really wanted it. And I remember I saw someone post it, and I was like manifesting it really hard. They interview you in your previous term, and you find out about it, and they give you like a celebratory like lunch at the end of that term. And then you meet like the managers, blah, blah, blah. And it's like this whole big thing. Um, a lot of people will question like, why why would you interview for, some, for a one-to-one? -one? when you can just get a one-to-one -one by signing up. Um, first of all, when you sign up, it's a lotto. Not everyone who signed up for a one-to-one -one got a one-to-one -one preceptorship. If you don't know what I'm talking about, one-to-one, -one, it's like when you actually have a preceptor versus, um, so you and your preceptor in whatever specialty that you feel like you're about to go into or that you're interested in um, versus a normal clinical, which is like 10, like five to 10 students with one professor, and it's just like normal clinical. Um, I did not want to do that because I have literally been doing that since like I started nursing course. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something hands-on. And I know to be honest that when I was talking to people in the clinicals, their professors weren't really taking it that seriously and they were really laid back. Some people like didn't even like show up to some clinicals. A lot of autonomy with a one-to-one -one preceptorship. Um, for clinicals, you're scheduled a certain day versus preceptorship, like, I remember one week I went to... <sighs> Me and Alex went somewhere. I don't know, we went on a trip or something. So I just doubled up my shifts the... Shit. I doubled up my shifts the week before because I wanted to um, not have to come in the next week. So it's almost like you're scheduling your schedule like you're a real nurse already. Um, the second thing that I really liked about my preceptorship is the fact that it was in the specialty that I wanted. So when you're in clinicals, you're going to be like probably doing like, um, I don't know, they put you like in med surge, sometimes they put you in like tele, they'll tell you that you're going to go to the ED or ICU, but they like rotate you through there. And it's just like all the specialties all over again. But if you have a feeling of what you want to do, I suggest doing one-to-one -one preceptorship so that you can learn more skills specific to that specialty. So, yeah. Um, another thing was... So, if you don't know... Okay, so this whole term is called integrations and it's to integrate you into the workforce. Um, there's a quiz every single week. I remember you have to benchmark. A benchmark is like... Every week you have to score above 60%, which really seems low. There was one that I didn't benchmark on. It was pharmacology. Oh my god. I didn't benchmark in pharmacology. Maybe that's why I got so many farm questions on my NCLEX. But yeah, so that was that. And then... Hold on. I'm texting one of my career services lady because I really want to do... 
I really want to get my PH PHN license, but it's like $300. It's really expensive. Um, but yeah, so that was basically that term. Um, it was really laid back, honestly. Um, it was just prepping you for the NCLEX. That's pretty much what this term is. It's just preparing you for the workforce and the NCLEX. This term, I found it super essential to utilize career services because they'll help you prep for interviews and like get dressed up, blah, blah, blah. Um, like they're helping me right now with my PHN. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's public health nurse and you essentially, it was integrated into our program, which um, not every program does it. I think you have to take some class if you didn't, but I took public health. so. We did that and then there were some hours required, so I'm going to try and pay for that because as a new grad nurse, you want to have as many like certifications and like letters by your name as possible to be like competitive. This term was pretty chill. Um, I didn't work, but I did actually... Um, so I remember we had, so this is why you need to use your resources. This is how I like get opportunities. I was able to get a aesthetic internship um, when I was talking to someone um, at one of the, it was like career spotlight or something. It was some event at West Coast. It was some event at my school and I just started talking to someone and I remember like I wanted to learn more about aesthetics because I was like really interested in it in it and I had no experience in it so obviously like you know anything helps and I essentially was able to um work at this internship at and it's really close by my house so it was really fortunate and I would do social media posts um we would do front desk so answering phones we would do back desk it should be um, Kind of just like helping clients taking their pictures before and after so if you don't know what aesthetics is, it's like It's like Botox injections all that jazz Personally, I don't think that I would want to do it like right out of nursing school um, I just don't think that's something that I would want to do right off the bat um, Something that I've noticed is it's if you really if you were a business major back in the day Oh girl, this is for you like you can sell stuff you will succeed in this field but it was i am not a business person oh my gosh if you don't want to buy something from me i will not force you to i'm gonna be like okay girl you can go like one simulation i did that super early on and the difference between simulation and this term is the fact that you're by yourself usually in simulation you're simulating with like three other students or four or whatever and you all go in together but this time it was like by myself I'm not going to spoil it because I don't think I'm supposed to really talk about what goes on. But yeah, that's pretty much what simulation is. And I scheduled that really early on, maybe like week three. And yeah, so that was that. Um, we, okay, um, we had one skills lab and it was like, I remember, I can tell you all the skills that we did. We did like blood admin, we did, um trick care we did everything because yeah it's integrations and what i did not appreciate this term was the fact that when we did the skills lab our teacher was just like okay guys um this is an open skills lab and i was like um girl you're supposed to be teaching us because even though we are integrations that doesn't mean that we um <clears throat> sorry we memorized like the ati way or the way she wants us to do these skills. Ask her, I was like, oh, can you help me with like trade care? But other than that, I like didn't really ask. Cause I was like, what am I gonna do? Like ask her to do every single station? So I don't know. It was just really uncomfortable to have to ask my professor to teach me because she didn't want to teach us. As much as I hated that so freaking much, I think I learned my skills well. And I think I learned like the steps well and I, I hate to say it, but it was helping me on the NCLEX because you have to put those things in order. Like, it's one of those drag and drop questions. So, um, at the end of everything, you have to take an exit exam, which is why you have to benchmark every week. Nothing happens if you don't bench, but you're just going to feel shitty about yourself if you don't bench. Um, it's kind of tracking if you, you're likely to pass the NCLEX and if you're on track with your knowledge of your content. So, I, su I suggest actually trying. 
you also have a paper that has you're doing like 700 questions a week because you have to um turn in all these questions at the end then there's also a meeting for the green light which is a program that they use to kind of incentivize students to pass the NCLEX on the first try so I did that because I wanted the money because I haven't paid I haven't paid off my credit card they'll pay for your NCLEX which is like $200 and I like that they actually help you out I don't know when you finish your green light program which is through ATI I like board vitals a little bit it made me feel kind of shitty but the explanations were just as good as the world um, just no pictures um, that was kind of integrated in the green light and I kind of liked that but I didn't like the ATI questions because I felt like ATI was way too easy my NCLEX questions are like that I felt like they were only at the level of ATI well, I'll kind of rank it for you guys so this is ATI's level of difficulty this is UWorld's level of difficulty and this is Board Vitals level of difficulty actually up here I like literally could not get past 50% no matter how hard I tried on Board Vitals I don't know what was going on like their questions are hard. I would rather just do U World, and I think that's the level of difficulty that you really need. If you really want to push yourself to do board vitals, but it was provided for us for free. Towards the end, um, right when we graduated, they sent out, or even before we graduated, they sent out the applications for the hospital that I had precepted at for a job. Here we go. Okay, so I was. If you didn't know, before I had done my preceptorship in the ICU, I had interviewed for ED. I did not get ED, but I've been wanting to do ED for so long. It was like one of those rotations, like, I don't, I'm pretty sure this is everybody, but like, everybody wants to go to the ED, like, every single clinical rotation. Like, I wanted to do the ED, like, search, peds, um, there was none in OB, but yeah, that's what I've been like really interested in and i'm still young so that's why i was just like okay like i can still do this fast-paced shit everybody and my mother <laughs> tried to convince me to do icu because they were like okay why don't you be a crna that's not my calling i don't know maybe somewhere down the line i'll change my opinion but not really my thing i think i should change my battery my light's blinking so when i was on my vacation so i went to vac went on vacation almost like the last the second to last week of August, so like around August 18th, I came back on like the 22nd. I was doing, there's an assessment that you have to take and that's what like determines if you move on. I don't know why it's red, hold on. Okay, my thing ran out of storage. She sent out the application before we even graduated and this was like one of the only ones that would accept you if you didn't have your RN license already. So when I did the transition to practice program, we had about 15 people there. Um, after the assessment, we probably had like five people who got an interview and it was crazy. I don't even know. I just remember doing that assessment and I didn't take it that seriously. Like I was in the airport, like we had a nine hour layover. So that's why I was doing that in the airport, like coming back from Cancun. I didn't know it was that important. But I just know that like I had done an assessment like that at Disney and I know how they want you to kind of answer it. When did I turn it in? I turned it in like maybe August 30th. I had gotten, or I turned it in when I was on the San Diego trip with Alex. And then I had um, gotten a call like literally a couple hours later asking like when's your NCLEX date? You can't be eligible until you have an NCLEX date. So I gave them a random ass date because I was not registered for the NCLEX yet. I was like, I'm going to take it um, September 20th. And they're like, okay. And then after that, um, they called me back and they're like, okay, when can we schedule an interview? And I was like, okay. Um, I had an interview on like September 5th, like mid morning. Um, it was really weird because I remember talking to some people because we came to school for a mock interview with career services. And I went to school and I remember talking to my friends. Some of them didn't get a call for an interview. And I was like, what the heck? Especially one girl who was on the ICU with me. And I was like, why Why wouldn't you get an interview? Like, I don't understand. Like, we did the same thing. If not, she was day shift. So I was like, she probably knows the managers more than I do. Because like, okay, the only time that I would really see supervisor, supervisors and managers, other than this one that would round at night, um, was in the morning. And in the morning, I'm freaking tired. I like, I'm not even in the mood to talk 
talk to anyone anymore like my social battery is drained by like seven i did not really like talk to the managers that much i remember one time um the manager did do it like a night shift with us but only for a couple hours and that was the only time i talked to her i was like oh do you remember me like um, I interviewed with you, blah, blah, blah. And then she told me about the new grad program, how it would start in October. And that's kind of how I got the introduction to it. Long story short, um, I actually kind of like messed up my application. I was supposed to do ICU, um, but I didn't swap it. So I put ED, ICU, and telemetry in that order. But then my mom was like, you got to switch it to ICU. You have to be ICU, blah, 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 blah. So being the person that's like easily swayed, I was like, okay, well, if I can do ICU and then go to ED versus like you, can, you can't do ED and go to ICU, which is not true. Like, that's not true. I ended up having an interview with ED and they told, I think that was my, like they thought that was my first choice. Like, I don't really know. And that was what was on my application. And I was like, holy shit. Like I tried so hard to convince myself that I wanted to do ICU and now I'm doing ED. And so I was like, okay, well, whatever. I'm just going to roll with it because that's what I wanted to do from the very beginning. Because like that's literally what I interviewed for when I was trying to do the preceptorship. I interviewed and the next day they called me. It was so fast. So freaking fast. They called me with an offer and they told me that I would be night shift. Loki was a little sad because I was like, oh my god. Is it because I didn't mark a shift? Like, that's why they gave me nights. But it's fine. Like, I'll just get the differential. <laughs> but it's whatever. Like, honestly, I'm so used to night shift now. I literally work night shift, did preceptor night shift, did some clinical night shift. It's not that bad. It's a good place to start when you're new. So, yeah, I definitely think that it will help me kind of pace myself in the beginning. So I'm really excited to announce that I will be, um an ER nurse which is freaking crazy like what the heck I don't even know like I have no idea how I got here like I have no freaking clue <laughs> super real with y'all like I wanted ED experience because I wanted to work at raves like I want to be one of those like medical people to help whenever like someone like passes out heat stroke OD all that I'm super super excited for that and I remember there was a question that I had. I don't know if it's on the NCLEX or practice question, but there was like, oh, you're working at a music festival. Um, and someone comes in with like these symptoms and I was like, heat stroke. And then it was like, take them to a cool area before you do anything else. Stuff like that. I'm like, I really want to do that eventually. That's why I really want to do ED. And like, you see so much in the ED. I haven't even been doing anything. I've just been filming videos ever since I passed my NCLEX. Um, I, I don't know which video is going to go first, my NCLEX video or this one, but I do have an NCLEX how I studied video. I did end up passing in 75, so I think a lot of it is just me a mental game. Just for my nursing school update, um, and now I'm going to be starting my new grad program, um, October 7th, so super, super freaking soon. And then tomorrow I have, like, I'm going to be taking my ID photos and everything, so that's exciting. Um, I don't know if my giveaway is still going on, but if it is, don't forget to enter that. Um, follow my social media, um, follow, follow Alex's social media, and um, comment down below on the video that it was on um, where you are in nursing school, and subscribe and like that video. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and don't forget to follow my social media at jazznurse underscore or at jazznurse2. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.